Welcome, welcome, welcome. Dr. Patricia Mills here, medical doctor, functional medicine practitioner, health transformation expert, and passionate advocate for your health. I'm so excited to be here with you today because I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite topics um, that I have used to balance my hormones naturally without the use of medications and that's through balancing my blood sugar okay so what I want to do is by the end of this talk you're going to understand why I'm saying that in order to balance your hormones you have to balance your blood sugar what does blood sugar mean and what are some things that I learned from wearing a continuous glucose monitor, a continuous sugar monitor, okay? So um, what I want to start off with is why do I say that in order to balance your hormones, you have to balance your blood sugar? Well, when you think of your hormones, they're like... Um, so there's the insulin hormone, which is the blood sugar hormone. It does a lot of other things, right? So it's too, it's very simplistic to say that, but I think it's useful for this conversation. And then you have your estrogen hormone, which is like your vava vum curvaceous um, hormone. Um, you have your testosterone hormone, which is like your muscle mass, libido hormone. Women also need testosterone to maintain that kind of zest of life. And progesterone hormone is like your chill hormone, your relax hormone. And of course, if you want to do things like get pregnant or you want to have good menstrual periods or you want to have like an easy transition into menopause and you want to have your golden years in your menopause, all of those hormones need to be in balance. So it's not so much looking at just the total level of each hormone, but how are they relative to each other, okay? And what's really cool is that What's very interesting is that they're not like operating independently of each other, floating around, like not acknowledging each other. They actually are more like children in a dance where the children are doing like, let's say, a ring around the rosy. They're holding hands. And if one of these hormones goes off balance, right, and they fall down, then all of the other hormones fall down too. And what do I mean by that is not that all of the other hormones get low in their levels, but rather they become unbalanced there's like this process this kind of domino effect that starts happening through the body when one of your hormones starts to become unbalanced okay so one of the ways that a lot of us women and men actually this is very applicable to men as well in balance our hormones is through the portal of blood sugar affecting your insulin hormone release okay and what do i mean by that it's like okay um, so let's say you eat your food and let's say you make a food choice that is um, what I call a fast carbohydrate. So if you're not familiar with that, if you're in my Wild Wisdom for Women's Facebook group, go into the featured sections, download my free ebook. I go deep into fast carbs, slow carbs and all that kind of stuff. But very quickly, fast carbs are foods that quickly spike your blood sugar like you eat it. And because of the way it's made, so those are flour, so refined flour, so like most breads are made out of refined flour, and an exception to that would be like an Ezekiel bread, which is like sprouted whole grain, not flour bread. Um, and then other things would be pasta, um, pastries, pizza, um, quick oats, quick rice, those are all very fast carbs. Another thing is smoothies are fast carbs. You take a whole fruit and you blender it, becomes a fast carb fruit juices, and all gluten-free flours, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, those are all fast carbs, okay? Um, so they all, you, they're all they all highly refined, and you eat them, and they're like a powder, and they go into your um, body like very quickly, and your blood sugar spikes. It like goes, okay? And if it spikes too, too fast, too quickly, and too high, so it's the how quickly it spikes and how high it spikes, your body needs to release more insulin hormone from the pancreas faster. So you get, uh, your, your pancreas has to like pump out all of this insulin all of a sudden to get that blood sugar down again, okay? Because the body needs to be in what we call homeostasis in the balance and the blood has to be very well balanced. The body will do everything it can to keep the blood in balance. So it's pumping out this insulin hormone, the insulin hormone, 
it goes up and as a result the blood sugar hormone goes down because the insulin what it does it's like the key to the lock in your cell it opens up the door to your cells and the sugar goes rushing in and then because there's so much insulin hormone then you see the blood sugar tank go low 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 so some people actually who have poor blood sugar balance they won't feel the high like you don't when you're walking around if your blood sugar is really like really high because you just ate a fast carb you don't actually feel anything and um, if you're in the initial stages of all of this, you know, um, even when the blood sugar goes down, like you may not feel anything too. You might be very like okay with that. So you may, most more likely than not, what I've learned through monitoring my blood sugar is that you usually don't even feel anything. But what you might feel on the blood sugar down part is you might you might get like a craving to eat a food, and you're like, that's weird. I just ate my breakfast. I just ate my lunch. Right. I just ate dinner. Like, why am I hungry? It's because the blood sugar dropped too low. It's like an overcompensation, okay? So you get food cravings and your energy crashes. And then what do you do? You eat again. But if you're not aware of the difference between fast carbs and slow carbs and you choose another fast carb to eat, your blood sugar is going to do that again. And then you're on the roller coaster of hormones. Do you see that? For some people, the blood sugar drops so low that they feel like what we call hypoglycemic. They get nauseous, jittery, low energy, kind of like... You know, you don't feel well and then they have to eat something sweet to kind of bring that blood sugar back up again. And again, you're on that roller coaster of blood sugar. And what's happening behind the scenes is that as you're overproducing insulin over and over and over again, that causes your estrogen to come out of balance, your testosterone and your progesterone. It totally tanks your progesterone levels, your chill hormone progesterone. So what happens there is that you have a hard time getting pregnant because you need progesterone to get pregnant. You have a hard time feeling good. You feel irritable and angry because that's your chill hormone. You can't get that one up. Your estrogen starts to go out of whack and that basically leads to things like endometriosis, fibrosis. And it affects the way that your organs function to the point where you can even start to develop things like, um, I mentioned fibroids, endometriosis, and polycystic ovarian syndrome, which a lot of women have, which is really um, the body starts to process things like testosterone differently and you start to get the facial hair and you start to get cysts on the ovaries um, you start to have problems with infertility your you know your periods are all out of whack and for some women that can manifest as um, um, other than PCOS um, premenstrual syndrome so you're like really really unhappy and uncomfortable leading up to your period and during your period okay and over time, it can also lead to things like cancer because insulin is a growth hormone and cancer is also in women particularly related to fluctuations in your hormones. Now, there's other things contributing to cancer. It's not many roads lead to Rome, so to speak. But the blood sugar, what's really cool about the blood sugar is that this is completely within your control. Okay, so you can actually improve your blood sugars. And, and so I'm going to share with you what I did here if anyone doesn't understand what I've said so far, please put your questions in the comments. I really want to make sure that what I'm saying is making sense. Okay, I just downloaded like a lot of information in like 10 minutes. Um, and I just want to make sure that you really get this. So feel free to ask your questions. Okay, if I need to, I'll go back and, and just do a little bit more detailed explanation. So how do how can you measure your blood sugars? Well, um, some people um, just start to like understand like what's fast carbs and slow carbs. So slow carbs is like whole grains. So like you take your white basmati rice, you rinse it until the water comes clear because that that kind of um, fine powder on the rice is kind of like a fast carb. It's a flour, a rice flour. So you want to get that out. You cut out processed foods from your diet because they always have sneaky sugars in there. Always like they have like I don't know fifty different names for sugar and they sneak it into those processed foods. Um, you would cut out eating pasta, like you'd use it as a treat for like a dinner out or a special dinner in, like every, you know, once every couple weeks or so, let's say, pizza as well. Um, you cut that, you kind of cut that out, cut that down, and then you would be focusing on like your uh, whole grains, like your, I mentioned the rice, um, quinoa, um, teff, millet, sorghum. You would be looking at things like um, vegetables. So all of your vegetables are all very, very good. Some of them are a little bit more fast carby than others, like a sweet potato. Um, if you bake it and it gets kind of caramelized, it can get like pretty sweet, so to speak, like lots of simple sugars. And I'm going to teach you some tips on how to eat that without without uh, unbalancing your blood sugars. Um, but other than that, like, you know, broccoli, cauliflower, zucchinis, you know, carrots, all that kind of stuff, pretty good. Um, and then you have your um, nuts, you have your seeds, you have your beans, your legumes, um, 
uh, you have your like seaweeds, you know, so there's lots of foods actually like when I created the elimination diet workbook, um, I had like a list of things that you couldn't eat, but then I had a massive list of things that you can eat. And sometimes we just have to re be reminded of the fact that there are a lot of foods out there um, that we can eat that keeps our blood sugar balanced. It's just that it's not part of the standard American way of eating. So yes, it does involve a lifestyle change. Okay. Um, and that's what I'm here to do is help you ladies um, kind of take that on, right? One small, sustainable, shifting step at a time. So what I did is when I first got into this health space and I learned about this whole blood sugar balance thing, I started doing what what's called the glucometer, which is like a finger prick, which diabetics use this machine to monitor their blood sugars. And I was like writing down in my log and, and it was great. I, I was like so fascinated. It's like a portal into your body. You know, you're like, oh my God, this is what's going on in my body. And I was learning things that like I thought were healthy for me. Um, just my blood sugar response was very, very high. And then I noticed things like when I'm stressed, when I was stressed out, my blood sugar response was like really out of whack. So like if I ate like an apple on one day when I was very relaxed um, and I ate an apple on a day where I had like slept poorly or, um, you know, had a stressful event happen in my life, that blood sugar response was really high. And the reason for that is, again, that, you know, the fact that all of the hormones dance together, another hormone in that dance is the hormone cortisol. So cortisol is a stress hormone, and it dances very, very closely with progesterone and insulin. They're kind of like together like that, okay, like cortisol, estrogen, um, insulin, progesterone, and insulin. And when cortisol goes up, um, progesterone goes down. So again, if you're high stress, you have less of that chill hormone. So it's kind of like a really hard situation to be in hormonally. And then your insulin levels start to go all, all out of whack. And not only that, and actually the, the, that's an indirect mechanism. It's not that cortisol causes insulin to go, um, to go low. And so your blood sugars go high. What happens is the stress situation is one where in the old days, what, you know, like, let's say like 30,000 years ago, we were stressed out. It was usually from a tiger running to like coming after us to run, right? Like we had to run to get away from that tiger. And what do you need when you're running? You need energy. So our stress response when it comes to blood sugar is the cortisol hormone at, um, acts on the liver and to make the liver, to cause the liver to make more sugar, in medical terms, that's gluconeogenesis, creating new sugar. So it takes um, energy from like stored fat um, and protein in the liver and it'll actually break it down and make sugars and pump it out into the blood. So it's very fascinating is that when you're under stress, your, your blood sugar will go up because of the effect of cortisol on the liver causing your blood sugar to go up. So now you have more blood sugar and you eat something and it's like an added, like you add to the blood sugar. So you're like compounding the blood sugar effect. It's crazy. and um, just this last week, I've been under a um, certain amount of stress in my life, and um, I've had to, I've been able to witness the effect. And the reason is that now over, um, I actually was like, you know what, I'm just going to pay for this. I bought a continuous glucose monitor. And you might be asking yourself, what? What is a continuous glucose monitor? And I was, and yeah, very good question, because it's not something that's commonly used these days. Um, and what it is, is basically it's the here so this is the band-aid that covers it actually like this waterproof band-aid um, and in and it's basically a sensor that's got a little needle that's like in my um, arm now it's funny because I watched a video about it and they're like the needle doesn't stay and I'm like well then how does it sense the blood sugar but maybe it's not in there I don't know but I don't know how they sense the blood sugar otherwise but basically it's in here and it senses my blood sugar and then what happens is that I actually scan I don't want to do this right now because I want to I want to make sure I can see any comments that come up and I haven't seen any comments yet. But I scan it and it shows up on my monitor. And actually, let me see if I can do this for you. So here's the app. Okay, you can see the blood sugar levels have been kind of all over the place. Um, and I'm going to scan it. So I'm going to scan now. See it scanned. And now it's going to show, and this is what's interesting, is that I um, ate my breakfast at 10, uh, 8 a.m., and it was my oatmeal, and I've been kind of playing with different ways to make my, my oatmeal blood sugar response um, be good. And you can see how it's just starting here to spike up again a little bit in response to the oatmeal. And what I did was I also went um, 
uh, for a walk after eating. Oh, good, I can still see the comments. And what I and the reason I now go for a walk after eating my breakfast or my lunch, or and I try after dinner, but dinner's a bit harder, especially over winter, is that I notice that if I eat a food and I I just sit down immediately afterwards um, to like work, versus if I eat a food and then I stay up like cleaning the kitchen, but ideally going for a walk, um, my blood sugar. Um, increase is not as high so instead of going from like let's say a level of five i'm in canada so that's like we're, we're using those kind of metrics um what you want in canada is to be between like a four and a seven um uh, so i go from like a let's say a four and a half or a five and if i if i don't go for a walk my blood sugar response will go to like a seven and a half but if i do go for a walk my blood sugar response after my oatmeal is six and a half sometimes even less like it'll be a difference of two points um, and in U.S. metrics, I understand that the, it can decrease your blood sugar rise by 20%, like quite significant, right? So, and why is that? Because when you're activating your, your big thigh muscles, okay, by walking or standing or even doing like, let's say a few squats, um, that activates the muscles and they literally suck up, they suck up the sugar from your blood. They have to use the sugar for energy. So it's a great way one, so starting off with our tips now, one really great way to keep your blood sugar within that Goldilocks zone, not too high, not too low, right where you want it, right? Like you don't want your blood sugar to be flat necessarily. You want it to do this, okay? But you don't want it to do that. This is, um, and whenever your insulin hormone is high, by the way, your body can't burn fat. It's like, it's like a valve, like let's say you're running a, a, a car and you've got like two tanks. You've got your fat tank and your sugar tank. Well, if your sugar tank is open, your fat tank is closed. So you could be actually like, you know, trying and trying to lose weight, but you can't. And one of the reasons could be that you're eating too many fast carbs, your insulin is too high too frequently, and you literally can't burn fat for fuel, all right? So one really good way to start trying to get into your ideal weight more effortlessly is not by counting your calories, but by monitoring the quality of the carbohydrates that you put into your mouth. That's it. Like, I don't count calories. I don't look at, um, like, how much I eat through the day. I look at the quality of what I eat. I have a question here from um, Ursula. She said um, she's been really interested in learning more about this device, NutriSense. Would love to hear feedback on it and suggestions for how long to use it. Three months, six months. Okay, perfect. That's great. So, um, yeah, NutriSense is a company that I um, ordered this through, and um, what it is is that they use, um, I think it's Libre, goodness, I'm forgetting the name. So they have like, um, um, they buy, uh, um, they buy a glucose monitor that's not theirs, but they buy it and then they sort of, um, they like sell it to you, so to speak, but they sell it in a package. So you can, you can buy, um, I think the minimum is buying two for, which is two weeks each. Each one of these lasts for two weeks each. So if you get for one month, you get two, right? And then what you can do is you can, if you just want one month, you just cancel your subscription, so to speak. But if you want it for two months, three months, six months, then you can just keep your subscription. Now, if you're diabetic, you're gonna keep your subscription, right? Because you're gonna be needing it for long-term. For people like myself, where I'm in health promotion and prevention, like I wanna prevent disease or I wanna reverse disease, um, I, I'm basically just using this for um, two weeks right now and then I'm saving my second sensor for like another time of the year because your blood sugar control fluctuates through the year like how your blood sugar is in the summertime is very different than in the winter time and that has to do with like the hibernation effect versus like the getting ready for hibernation effect right your hormones are different through the year. And I also want to do it like, for example, I just did an elimination diet. I do it like once or twice a year just to see where my body's at, how it's responding differently to foods. And I like to use it during those times because what I've noticed is that when you eat a food that doesn't work well with you, like it kind of um, causes your immune system to start to get irritated. Like you have a food sensitivity or a food allergy or intolerance, not allergy, but sensitivity. Allergy is like anaphylaxis like swelling can't breathe sensitivity is like uh, after like you eat your food and like after a day or three days even sometimes seven or even sometimes ten days you start to feel unwell from the effects of having eaten that food and that can start your blood sugar to being out of whack so I did notice that with myself um, that I definitely had issues with some foods that were causing my blood sugar to become unbalanced just because I had a food sensitivity and the way I knew that was because I know I have a sensitivity to certain foods and I purposely ate them 
um, in order to find out how my blood sugar response was. And so so what's been very interesting is over these last two weeks, I've been, as I've been using this monitor, because I've I've been I've been playing around, right? I wanted to learn like, are there are there certain kind of foods that make your blood sugar go, go up? Are there certain kind of cooking ways that you cook your food and prepare your food that make your blood sugar go up more than others? And are there certain combinations of food that makes your blood sugar better controlled than others? And what I found was that yes, and because I was eating foods I don't usually eat in order to like look at my body respond to it I started um, getting I have more blood sugar in my body right now than usual and for the first time in such a long time I got a yeast infection because my blood sugars were too high why well it feeds the yeast like we all have yeast in our body that's normal but you don't want to feed it so and so I, I got it down by cutting out the sugars again but getting very clean with my diet now it's gone it lasted for like um, 48 hours and I didn't have to use medication thank goodness this time I just cut down my blood sugars really well um, and then um, what I, the other thing that happened to me at the same time was I got an infection of my of my finger um, the the skin around my finger it's called um, peri um, goodness I'm it's the periungal but what's it called anyways I got an infection here and um, I only I used to get that and um, before I learned about blood sugar control and it came back again because it's I've been purposefully making my blood sugar go out of whack to see like to play around with this device and kind of learn more about it so I could teach things to you so um, anyways it's kind of like the hazards of the job um, so what have I learned so far? Um, so whether or not you use it for three months or six months, that depends on, on what you need. Like I, I have learned enough about my body in two weeks because I've been purposefully playing around with it, like trying different foods very intentionally. So for example, I took my oatmeal, so I do my overnight soaked oatmeal, right? And again, that recipe is in the free ebook in the, in the featured section in the Wild Wisdom for Women Facebook group. If you don't have it, reach out to me. Like if you're not in the Facebook group and you're watching this video at some future time outside of the group and you can't join the group for whatever reason, just email me info at drpatricianmills.com and I'll send you the ebook. Um, so there's recipes in that ebook. And so for example, there's the oatmeal recipe and there's the baked apple recipe as an example, right? Well, the oatmeal recipe, what I've learned is that you soak the oats overnight, right? And you have the Saccharomyces boulardii, which is the probiotic. Well, um, my blood sugar response was better if I let the water from overnight drain out. Why? Because there's some residual oat flour. Um, you know, there's the whole grain, which is the oat itself. And then there's like that dusty kind of fine powder, you know, that you just because it's been like, pro, you know, like kind of put in bags and moved around. So it kind of just flowers off. So the next day I just let the water drain and then I add water, like a little bit more water to compensate and I cook it. Um, and that resulted in much better blood sugar control. And if I added like nuts or some kind of like good quality protein to that, like something with a little bit more fiber, less sugar. So like nuts or seeds, or if you're eating like an egg or something like that. So when you combine your carbs with like a good quality protein, whether it's vegetable or animal, um, it just helps that blood sugar response and it has to do with the rate of absorption, like slowing down the rate of absorption of sugars into your body. Okay, I also put olive oil, but the olive oil didn't help so much in slowing it down. What really helped was foods with like more fiber. And the reason for that is that if you eat a food with fiber, so if, if I were to eat my oatmeal, um, second, if first I ate like a plate of vegetables and then I ate my oatmeal, the, the fiber from the vegetables actually coats the lining of your small intestine, which is where a lot of the sugar gets absorbed. So there's a, there's a stomach and then there's a small intestine and then there's a large intestine, like the colon, and then you poop, right? So after the stomach, um, your the small intestine is where a lot of the sugar and the nutrients get absorbed into the body. And if you eat your um, fiber foods first, like your vegetables or your nuts and that kind of stuff, it coats the, the, the small intestine. And so you get less of the sugar getting in. So that works too. Like let's say you're having a, a meal, like a, a lunch or a dinner, and you've got like, let's say rice, uh, meat, and vegetables um, the, the best sequence of events I found is if you eat your vegetables first because it creates that coating of fiber, then you eat your rice um, and so the rice is like it doesn't get as absorbed into the body you get you know so it's not as like quick release of sugar into the body. And why do I say to eat your meat last? Well meat it takes a lot longer to digest and break down and so you, you kind of want the easily digestible stuff first and then the harder to digest stuff kind of last so that it's not like you know backing up behind the meat and start 
going to get like fermented foods and stuff like that. And interestingly, if you go to Italy, um, is if anyone's ever been to Italy, that's how they eat. They'll have their vegetables. They'll have like in Italy, like in they would never at a real Italian restaurant put a bread basket in front of you. It would be like the crudités. It'd be the antipasti, right? Like it'd be the vegetables. And then you have your vegetables, and then you have your pasta, and then you have your meat or your rice and your meat, right? Like, or your or your vegetables, your pizza, your meat. That was always the sequence. And I don't know if they did that intentionally, but isn't it interesting that that's for blood sugar balance? That is a really good, really good way to eat. So, so the tip is um, uh, rinse your um, like drain the rice from your oatmeal. Rinse your your rice that you're cooking really really well until the water comes clear because that's rice flour too okay that's why gluten-free products which are usually made out of like oat flour or rice flour um, even brown rice flour there it's very bad for blood sugar balance because it's very quick um, it's very simple very fast carbs getting into your system so yes it's good if you are trying to avoid gluten no it's not good if you're trying to balance your hormones okay so that's an interesting tip um, the other thing that really, really works is, um, so the baked apple, right? So I, I like, I love baked apples are like, have amazing amounts of like really good soluble and insoluble fiber, like two kinds of fiber that you really want. And it has pectin. Hi, Bev. <laughs> Hi. Um, and it has pectin, which is just underneath the skin, which is very healing for the gut. So, um, I was always under the impression that it, like, it's a really good food and it is a really good food for the gut healing, but it's not such a good food for the, for the sugar. I found the blood sugar balance was not very, very good. So when I eat a regular apple versus a baked apple, a freshly baked apple, my blood sugar response was way, way higher. Okay. Um, so one way that I found to kind of get around that is that, and I had read this somewhere where if you take um, um, something like a sweet potato and you bake it or an apple and you bake it or even rice and you cook it, if you cool that food down, like let it cool on the counter or even put it in the fridge for a little while and you would maybe eat it that day or maybe even the next day as a leftover, the act of cooling it turns those fast carbs into what's called the resistant starch, which is another fancy word for a kind of fiber. And what's cool is that let's say let's say the the um, the apple is like you know 50% fiber and 50% fast carbs, right? Um, and then you cool it down. That 50% fast carbs turns into like 25% fiber, 25% fast carbs. I'm just giving numbers. I don't know the percentage to say you know, but just to let you know, like more of that fast carb gets transformed into fiber. And what happens is we don't actually digest fiber our microbiome eats the fiber and turns it into ketones which are super fuel for the body and they're not sugars okay they're they're um, a di totally different kind of short chain fatty acids anyways they're very very helpful fuel for the body so you don't get a blood sugar spike so the simple act of like cooling down your sweet potato so what I do now is I'll bake my sweet potatoes I'll bake my apples I'll like let them cool down on the stove put them on the in the fridge and the next day I'll heat them up like in the oven again uh, gently like not super hot or on the stove in a pan um, that I found my blood sugar response was much better to that and it was really cool because that's like a good leftover too right like kind of cooking for the next day Ursula is asking would it help to add nut butter to raw apple to slow down the carb absorption absorption yes for me it did help it did help yeah, to adding something like a nut butter. So another way to look at it is is you don't want to necessarily eat a naked carb. So a carbohydrate um, without anything in it. And it's funny because in Ayurveda, they speak about having like um, in the middle of the afternoon, like around three or four o'clock, you know, when your energy kind of dips and you want to have like a little bit of something, they speak about um, having like a simple fruit just on its own. Um, and I'm having a hard time reconciling that recommendation with the blood sugar balancing because, and it's not like, so I ate an apple in the middle of the afternoon and my blood sugar balance, um, you know, my blood sugar did go high. Um, it wasn't astronomical, but it did get to like a seven, a seven and a half sometimes. Um, and I'd go for a walk and kind of bring it down in that way. Um, and then if I would eat it with like a few nuts beforehand kind of thing, like just a few cashews or um, pecans or walnuts or something like that the blood sugar response was definitely better so that's what I mean like a calorie is not a calorie like think about there's also like a functionality to your food so some people are like well I don't want to eat nuts because they're very high caloric now yes you do not want to eat a massive amount of nuts like I had like you know four cashews like a couple of 
pecans and walnuts, like not a lot, like we're not talking like a hefty handful. Um, but that, 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 that fiber that it turns like literally they've shown, shown this in research with almonds, like it turns into like a coating, a coat, like a matrix of food that coats the lining of your stomach that feeds the microbiome living inside your gut and protects you from that naked carb effect, you know, so it slows down the absorption of sugar into your body. So food combination, food preparation, food storage, like all of these things seem to really make a difference. Now, the key is you want to really find out for yourself because every person's different. Like I have like, um, you know, Bev here is, is um, um, you know, it, working uh, is one of the people that I've worked with in Body Wisdom and uh, Ursula has done my Wild Collective program and, you know, so lovely to see you here, ladies. Um, we like, you know, continue to talk about personalizing things for your body right because um, what you want is you want um, to find out like what is the unique interaction between your genetics right and your environment because yes like pretty much everybody who eats fast carbs is going to imbalance their blood sugars to a certain extent with some people's genetics they can tolerate more of it than others even when we talk about fats, like some people can tolerate having a lot of fat in their diet and other people cannot. That's genetic, right? So you got to find out for yourself. So um, I wanted to share with you today just why am I talking about blood sugar balance? What is the importance of it? How does it relate to your hormones? So we've covered that. Some interesting tips about it. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is stress. I mentioned before that stress was a big one. And what I found was that on the nights where I had like um, some sleepless nights because I'm dealing with stress in my life and um, you know I'd wake up in the middle of the night kind of like wake up and I'd be like awake you know like crap I should not be awake what I found was that when I looked at my um, blood sugar monitoring uh, my the blood sugar rose at that time which means that my cortisol hormone went up so that particular awakening was because of the cortisol hormone being released due to my subconscious mind um, trying to like process my stress, right? Because like I wasn't thinking about it as I was sleeping, but as I emerged from sleep, all of the subconscious stress was like kind of coming out and my cortisol hormone went up um, and I just couldn't go back to sleep because you can't sleep with high cortisol hormone, right? You want high melatonin, low cortisol when you're sleeping and when you're naturally as we awaken, the melatonin goes down and the cortisol goes up, but you don't want it to cortisol to go up at night. So there's many reasons why people have sleepless nights, uh, insomnia or difficulties maintaining sleep or going to sleep. And one of them is through stress, which can um, trigger cortisol hormone goes up and it messes with your blood sugars. And this is one of the mind body connections where you can actually make yourself very sick just by not being able to deal with your levels of perceived stress. You can be eating everything right you can be exercising properly. Um, and one thing I realized was that when I was going through a lot of stress, I had to eat even better than usual. I had to be really clean with my eating for my blood sugar to be well controlled. And I had to back off of the very heavy intensity exercising. Um, and I had to like do a little bit less sauna because um, those things do increase cortisol, which do increase your blood sugar. That's like normal. Whenever you do something like that, it kind of gently stresses the body and you want a little bit of gentle stress in your life to kind of, you know, tone the body up. We call it her like the hermetic effect. You know, you want to like have a little bit of like, you know, like you want to stress your body out a little bit but not too much again it's that goldilocks zone so um because i could see that my my stress levels were high and my blood sugar was all over the place i had to balance the yang with the yin so i had to do more meditation more qigong more gentle stretching more walking in nature um and back off of the heavy exercises because otherwise my blood sugar would have been really out of whack so some people manage their stress with really really hard workouts and that can be okay um, but not if you're doing it like every day for a long period of time, what you're going to do is you're going to get into massive hormonal imbalance through that cortisol blood sugar kind of link. Okay, so that's kind of a topic for another time. I'll definitely go into it if, if you find it of interest and if you want me to dive more into this. But I think we've covered a lot for now. It's a lot of information I just put in there. If you have any questions in your comments, um, if you have any additional questions, 
um, please put them in. Those were great questions, ladies. Thank you for joining me. I so appreciate your presence and your participation. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have anything more you want me to cover on the next live, just put it in the comments and I'll, I'll mark it down for future conversations, okay? So I hope you're all having a wonderful rest of your day, evening, or night, depending on when you catch this replay. And I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> I've got my Iron Man Band-Aid for my, for my finger from, the, from my kids, right? Isn't it very stylish? <laughs> All right, ladies and, uh, and everybody who's watching, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. 